Hey, lady leader, this is Jen Mack. And so, hey, are you ready to go inward and begin shifting your life? Today, I use the acronym Go Inward. Go get your journal and let's go get that nugget. Welcome to Life Mastery for Women. I'm your host, Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Join me here three times a week for empowering conversations, powerful tools, and techniques to help you experience more joy, healing, and deeper connections in your life. Get ready, ladies. It's time to get that nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Life is hard, but your personal growth doesn't have to be. Hello, lady leaders. It is Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope you are finding peace within. If you're not finding peace within, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Today, we're going to talk about, and I'm going to say it, it's my favorite. This is the key to everything. That is what I have discovered, found out, had faith in put my entire life on. I am like betting everything on black. I want to say going inward, going into the blackness, going into the energy within, aligning the chakras, playing with the energy, playing with the universe. This is where shit gets real. This is where healing takes place, elevation, all the things that you're looking for. Do you remember the do you remember the phrase where they say everything you need is is within you? That's what that means. When they say things like, you're not going to get it with that attitude, that is what that means. Aligning with the energy within. Now, going inward is today's acronym. I love creating acronyms because, and I like to do them in a way that if you don't remember what each of the letters mean, you're going to know just the, you'll get the whole nugget. Today's acronym is go inward. So get out your journal, get out your notebook, and let's get that nugget. So if you don't remember what each of the words or each of the letters stand for, it's totally okay. It's going to, it's going to help you to get there a little bit quicker. But you know, it's, it's going to be easier because you know, you just go inward. You look at your life and you go, okay, I'm feeling like crap. I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm pissed off. I'm sad. I'm grieving. I'm resentful. I'm vengeful. I'm whatever. And I don't want to be because... Whatever it is you're about to do out there, you're not going to succeed. The inside is what needs that alignment. You might get a little bit of satisfaction by yelling at that person or, or ignoring that person or manipulating in some way, but I'm telling you, it's not going to last long. It's not going to ultimately get you what you want, which is what? Now that's for you to decide, right? That's for you. You say, I'm angry. You say, if I wasn't angry, what would I be? I'd be joyful. I'd be happy. I'd be leading my life. I'd be empowered. I'd be making choices in my life that advance my life. But you know, because we're hypnotized <laughs> in our emotions and, and hypnotized by our five senses, we are lulled into a false reality. Now, just take that in for a second. We are lulled. We are hypnotized into a false reality because what is out there that you're looking at and engaging with is your past thinking that has created that environment, whether it's good or bad. The things that are good in your life, you did that. And the things that are going bad in your life, you also did that. We just have to clear the energy. And you go, yeah, yeah, Jen, listen, you know, I'm 50 years old, I'm 40 years old, I'm 60 years old, and I've been dealing with the same thing for a year, uh, years or 10 years or 20 years or my whole life. Yep. And I go, the energy hasn't been cleared. The emotions haven't been processed. Have you gone inward? Have you forgiven? Have you, have you gone in and processed the emotion? Have you gone in and go, what does happiness mean to me? What does success mean? What does abundance mean to me? Like, Take a second. Define that for you. Because success to me is a completely different definition than it is for you. Take a second. When the podcast is over and you have 10 minutes, is just contemplate. Just sit quietly for 10 minutes and ask yourself, what is missing from my life? You go, okay, love is missing. Great. What does love mean to you? Define it. Explain it as if you're talking to a four-year-old girl. What does it mean? What does abundance mean? What does success mean? What does prosperity mean? What does happiness mean? And what does it mean to you? We don't take time to do that. We just 
walk around and engage with our environment and deal with our emotions. And then we complain about how things are going or not going. I'm asking you to step out of your comfort zone. Step in, step in to your life. Show up in your life and go, you know what? This is what I want. And you get into the driver's seat and you figure it out. You go inward and you create the environment within so it can start to reflect out in front of you. So let's get to this acronym because I can go on for decades giving you some motivational talk about getting engaged and becoming present in your life. And I, and it's, it's important. It's important because this is where it's going to change and this is where it's going to get better. So let's go and let's get the nugget. Let's get better. So going inward, this is the acronym. The G stands for grounding. You are on a planet that we call earth. Mother earth is the spiritual goddess that supports us abundantly, that gives to us. Grounding is your connection to the planet. This is where your safety, your security, your belonging, your purpose, your your feeling a sense of being here. I'm here. This is this is where I'm at. I deserve a life of happiness and success and abundance and prosperity, whatever you want, right? I deserve that simply because you're here, simply because you're on this planet. And Mother Earth can provide that to you. So grounding is what the G stands for because to me, that is so vitally important because you are in a human body. You are a spiritual being having a physical experience. So to me, it's like, you know, you played the video game, right? You're not the character in the video game. You're the person who has the controller. You decide, does he go left? Does he go right? Does he get in the car? Does he punch the guy? Does he shoot the alien? Does he get in the aircraft? What does he do? That's the you that is on the planet. The you that is controlling that character is the spiritual version of you. That was a good one, wasn't it? That was like spur of the moment. I didn't even think about that one. That analogy. I like using video games as analogies because we've all played them. We've all been there. And um, they seem to really kind of spin and and connect us to to like who we are. It's like you're Pac-Man, okay? Well, the Pac-Man is the human version of you, so to speak. But the real you is a person holding the joystick. You like that? Rather than controller, joystick. All right, here we go. Okay, so go inward, grounding. Now, how do we ground? This is everything and anything to do with connecting to Mother Earth. Connect yourself to the Earth. It is springtime and we are getting geared up for, we've got birds coming. You know, I set out a bird feeder. We've got Orioles. We've got, I've got a a downy woodpecker on my feeder right now. We've got Orioles singing in the trees. It's amazing. We've got, um, what do you call it? Uh, Red Cardinals all over. I live in Northern Michigan. We attract great birds. To me, this is being a part of Mother Earth. I have four turtles, so I was feeding them today and just being with them. They're part of nature. Mowing my front lawn today, smelling of fresh grass, moving, um, you know, I've got some planters out there, moving planters and mowing and looking at the flowers and the grass and, and these little tiny, I think they're like little African violets, just these little wildflowers that are all over in my front yard. That is getting grounded being grateful and thankful that Mother Earth is providing these beautiful, wonderful things around in my yard. And my dogs are outside playing and, you know, digging holes and being ridiculous. But <laughs> but it's all like, it's like this, this is Earth. This is where we're at. This is our planet. And the dirt and the rocks and the river and, and the trees and the fruits on the trees. I have a little tiny peach tree and he's getting some really cool little leaves. He's so cute. Just a teeny little, he's a dwarf patio peach tree, but he's got teeny, teeny, tiny little fruits. And they're like, I don't know, it's like the size of the, of the tip of a Q-tip. And uh, that grounds me. That puts me right here, present moment, right here on this planet. I suggest you do the same thing. Find the thing that works for you, that gets you grounded, that puts you right here on this planet so you can be uh, in that place of abundance and in that purposeful space. That's what the G stands for. The O is overcome the body. Now, Remember, the body wants to engage, right? The body wants to move around in the environment, wants to engage with its five senses. And meditating and going inward is about overcoming 
the bodies need to get up and move, to get up and do things, to get up and write things down, to engage with our our phones, to go through social media, to get up and do the dishes, to get up and make the list, to get up and, I don't know, go somewhere or, or talk to somebody or do something, right? You're going to overcome that. So there's the other version of you that's the person holding the joystick that says, nope, we're going to just sit here. And so instead of running your character around and engaging in the rest of the game, you're going to find a little park in your game and you're going to sit your character down. And you're going to say, no, I'm in control right now. We're going to sit for 20 minutes. We're going to sit for 30 minutes. We're going to sit for 60, whatever you choose. And I say, whatever you choose, add 10 minutes. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. And you're going to overcome the body. You're going to be in control because as soon as you're in control, then your life begins to shift because this is you going, I'm going to be the one who decides. I'm going to be the one who says, you know what? I want to shift my life because, you know, if, if you're a woman here and you've ever started a workout program, you know exactly what it's like to overcome the body. The body doesn't want to get out of bed at 5.30 in the morning. The body doesn't want to work out anymore. The body doesn't want to run on the treadmill. The body doesn't want to go through the gym exercises. They want to stay in bed. The body wants to rest and relax. Okay? When you overcome that, you're in charge. Stuff changes. This is why change is so hard because the body is so grounded in such a deep-rooted thinking in the past that overcoming that is everything you've got. But it's so worth it because you overcome, you overcome, you overcome, and all of a sudden the body goes, okay, you're, you're, you're in charge. And it relents, okay? That's the O. Grounding and overcoming the body. The I stands for introspection. One of my favorite words. Introspection is the awareness of the energy within. My suggestion would be to start with your awareness behind your eyes and just spend some time there. Spend some time in that energy behind your eyes. And then the best part, and this is where you know you're really starting to get it, is to spend the time in the energy in your heart center, in your heart chakra. Go there where it's dark and feel or see or sense your heart. That is one of my favorite things to do because it's like, I don't, like as I'm talking right now, I don't hear my heart beating. I don't, I don't sense my heart. But when I can get quiet and I just bring my awareness to behind my eyes and I just spend a second there and I go inward behind my heart and I go, and I wait and I wait a couple seconds and I ask my body to show me what receiving mode feels like and my heart just opens up. It just opens up. And I'm like, there you are. And then I can hear and I can sense my heart, the size, the beating, the rhythm, and I can feel it. And I want you to do the same thing. Introspection is, it's a big, it's a big word. And it has, to me, it has a big defined, um, a big definition. And that is feeling the energy. Like I can feel my blood moving through my veins and I can like, I can hear my heart beating and I can feel and sense my my chakras and I can feel the energy of my chakras. You keep doing that, you'll be able to do that too. You'll be able to balance your chakras. You'll be able to heal your body. You know, like I had a swollen lymph node that's been kind of bugging me for a couple of weeks and I was waking up with headaches. I'm like, man, what is up? You know, I need to drink more water or something. And I had this headache, headache, headache for like seven days in a row, waking up with it and progressively went away throughout the day. And then all of a sudden I'm waking up with a headache and my neck was hurting, like my neck muscles. And I'm like, what the flip? Like what's happening? I'm like, well, I did this workout the other day. Maybe that's it. You know, I'm like, I usually don't like that was kind of weird. Right. And then all of a sudden I was, I was like rubbing the back of my neck, like right at the base of my, uh, right at the base of my head rubbing. I'm like, oh, there's like, like a bump there. I'm telling Amy, I'm like, oh, you look at this. And she's like, there's no bump. And I said, well, push on it. And it was like, sent me right to the ceiling. Well, it was a swollen lymph node. And I'm like, what the frick, man? And my neck was hurting. I had this headache. I'm like, okay. I said, so, you know, I did a little research on it and, you know, maybe fighting some sort of an infection or something. And I'm like, okay, I didn't do anything. I took some ibuprofen so I can kind of focus throughout the day, you know, kind of get rid of the headache. And that helped a little bit. And then I'm um, like, you know what? I'm going to heal it. So I close my eyes and I go into that pain and I can feel it and I can see it. And I like, I release this pain from my body. I elevate my body. I give a bunch of gratitude. I'm like, thank you for this healing. Thank you for this space. Thank you. I no longer need this pain. 
I did a little bit of soul searching on what that possibly could mean. And it made sense, you know, what I was reading. And so I did a little bit of soul searching. I did a little bit of releasing. And today it feels, I can still feel it. The bump is still there, but the pain is gone. And it's gone. It was going on for two weeks. And it just took me a second. It took me a second to get grounded, to get present, to find the pain, like what it was. Like I think, oh, it's just a headache. And now it's gone. So introspection can be such a powerful, powerful tool for you. Not only is it raising your vibration so you can problem solve, raising your vibration so you can start attracting things in your life that you want, raising your vibration so you can get new and gain new insight and perspective, raising your vibration so you can heal and change and lead and improve your life and your relationships. Well, yeah, start practicing. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 60 minutes, go inward. Explore the universe within. I highly, highly encourage it. The N in inward stands for never give up. Do it every day. Do it every day. Never give up. Keep going. Because the the success is on, you know, the 19th try, or maybe it's the 107th try. You're going to keep going. You didn't walk on the very first time you, you wobbled your little chubby legs. You did not walk. It was a thousand tries before you started walking. A thousand. You didn't, you didn't produce the letter G correctly the first time you held the pencil. You didn't. You tried and you tried and you tried and now you can do it. You didn't learn to drive the very first time you got in the car or ride a bicycle. So go back to that learning stage. Give yourself some grace and some encouragement and some patience and go, I'm not going to give up because I deserve it. I'm not going to give up because I know that there's something magical on the other side of this. I'm not giving up because you know what? There is a better way. When I was 12 years old standing in my shed when I was when I was young and at home and my mom was struggling with paying bills, my brother had just moved out. I'm like completely by myself. My best friend is gone and I'm like, "Dude, there's got to be a better way. Like there's got to be something out there. This can't be it. It can't be." And I'm telling you right now, trust me. There isn't that isn't, this is not it. This is not all there is. Whatever you are struggling with right now, there is another side. You just have to stand up and go, you know what? She's right. I'm going to go find it. And I'm going to go inward and I'm going to raise my vibration and I'm going to find the solution. Because remember, the solution is not where you're at in the struggle zone. The solution is above the struggle zone. The solution is above and you got to get up there. The third or the W uh, in inward is want. Creating a space for you to create desire. So when, you know, I, I, you, I've said this a thousand times. We live in a small house. These boys aren't getting any smaller. I think they're both like six one right now. And when I bought this house, it was just me. It was just me, um, one dog and two cats. And that was it, right? No kids, no, no relationship, no anything. I'm moving this house. I'm like, it's perfect for me. It's perfect. And I have three bedrooms and one bathroom. And I have a full basement, full walkout basement, no garage, no dishwasher. It was a very simple home. It was perfect. It was my, my, uh, my first home. I absolutely love it. It's got a great big fenced in backyard, a great big front yard. I think it's only three quarters of an acre. But now my life is shifting and changing. I have a family. I have two dogs. I have, I have three kids, but one, you know, Bob has moved out and married. And so it's me and Amy and the boys. And it's like, we need some space. We need a bigger house. You know, and since COVID, the house housing is, you know, like tripled in price. And I live in a very beautiful area. So houses are even more <laughs> than your normal, normal home range. But I want that. And it's not from this place of desperation. It's from this place of dreaming. I want to expand. So allow yourself to want, not complain where you are because you created where you are based on your co-creation with other people around you, but you are creating what you are living currently. So allow yourself to see on the other side of it. Go, you know, God, man, my house is so small and I need a garage. Okay, all that's great. You can complain all day long, but then you go, okay, if I didn't have this house, if I could picture, if I could create another situation, a better situation, what is it? What is it? What do I want? And go there and start relishing in the newness, the new canvas, the new canvas, because I'm going to shift my energy to that. 
I'm going to shift my energy to the new thing that's coming. It's like the excitement when you know you're going on vacation and you're like, oh, or the last few days of a job that you just put in your two weeks. And all of a sudden, the last week of your two weeks notice, you're like, oh, my God, like this is the best week I've ever had ever since I've been here. (laughs) Well, because you're releasing the resistance because you're moving on to something new. Okay. You have to have faith in that blank canvas. You have to have faith in yourself that you can shift. And it does. It is re- it's going to require you to wake up. And you know what? That's what the other W, not that there's two W's in inward, but a second part is wake up, is want and wake up. And you do. You have to wake up. You have to snap your fingers and stand in front of the mirror and go, you know what? I'm in charge. This is my life. I am ready. I am ready to start shifting my energy. I'm ready to get the health. I'm ready to get the love of my life. I'm ready to get the career. I'm ready to make the money. I'm ready to find joy. I'm ready to find joy in this life. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start wanting. I'm going to start moving towards the things I love. I'm going to start leading in my life instead of being a follower or a victim. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to get in the driver's seat. I'm going to push the gas pedal and I'm going to start creating my life. The, the A in inward stands for align with your desires. So right after want, you are going to align with that because you can't get into that meditative state, think about your house, feel amazing, get out of the meditative state and immediately start complaining about your house. Okay. Energy is energy is energy. Energy is everything. And everything is energy. We start learning how to control our energy. We start shifting in great big ways. So right now, this might be a brand new awareness for you. Gosh, the A could even stand for awareness, but this could be something that you've never experienced before. Like you might still go to work and start trying to manipulate the the people, your coworkers, your boss, traffic, whatever. And you might start thinking, you know what? What if there's a little bit more power in going inward to unfold the things outward. Now listen, this could be a great big shift for you. Like this could be a very big new awareness. And and for some of you, it is going to be. But meditation is not about just the time during your meditation. That's only part one. And part two is now trying to keep the vibration high based on whatever it is you're trying to create in your life in your waking state. So that's a big shift to have happen. And if this is something you need support in, please send me an email, themeditationroomtc at gmail.com. Say, hey, Jen, you know what? I'm interested in your coaching program and I would love to get on board with this because I really want to start shifting my energy. This is when magic starts happening, where then you, you get off a coaching call and you go to the grocery store and you're like, oh my gosh, I just found the love of my life. It happens that fast. The shifts are amazing. So keep it in mind that as I'm teaching new things and bringing new awarenesses to you, that there's ways for us to work together. There's ways for me to support you in this endeavor. So keep that in mind. All right, let's get back to it. The R stands for getting ready for change or ready for change. Readying yourself for change. Now, this is probably the hardest things that my clients go through is as we start shifting, Think of it as the caterpillar shedding its well, shedding its um, its outer skin. If you've ever watched like a monarch butterfly become the butterfly, it sheds that outer skin and steps into a new way of being. Now I can fly. Now I'm this big, beautiful butterfly. Well, the caterpillar leaves his other his other caterpillar friends behind. So this is the hardest part about change is leaving those lower vibrational uh, situations, circumstances, and even sometimes people behind. I left a nine-year relationship because the gap was so great. I'm going and she's not. And it uh, it was a shedding. It was a shedding and a transformative process for me because I'm like, you know what? My life is going and I wanna go with it. I'm like ready to grow. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to shift. And she wasn't going with me. And I had to leave her behind. Or I had to like, you know, I had to separate and leaving her behind. But I mean, I had to separate. So it became a clear decision on where my life was headed. And in order to shed, it not only opens the doors to new possibilities, but it opens you up to new possibilities. New relationships on my end were formed. New new circumstances, new availabilities, new opportunities came into my life because I was able to shed the lower vibrational frequency situations, circumstances, and in this case, a relationship that 
was kind of anchoring me down. So that part is really hard for my clients, people who I've worked with that have, I've opened the door to their awareness, but then they have a choice. Just like in any, just like in any relationship, any job, any situation, if you have a choice, even in your health, you have a choice. Do I stay in this ill health, this job that doesn't make sense, this relationship that I don't want to be in or that isn't, that isn't nurturing or nourishing my soul? Do I stay or do I go? Because when you start to el- when you start to elevate, when you start to level up, things are going to start changing, and they're going to start changing quick. And it's now be ready for things to shift. Be ready. Start looking forward. Start looking out. You know, I can see people. I use the analogy of climbing out of a barrel, and I can see people going, "Yeah, you know what? It's pretty cozy in that barrel with the lid on. Like, there's a lot going on out here. The sun is the sun is high, and uh, you know, there's a lot a lot of space and a lot of color and a lot a lot of movement." Man, I don't know. That barrel is kind of cozy. You can get back in the barrel, but I'll tell you, life is magical outside of it. There's a lot of there's a lot of choices. When the barrel, you can't see anything. You're cramped. It's dark. It's damp. It stinks, but it's comfortable. The body becomes comfortable, and that's the hardest part about change. You step out of the barrel and you start taking a few steps, and now it's the unknown. Now it's the unknown. And in this space of the unknown, there's one thing that you can do to help ease that transition. And it's called visualization. It's called bringing that in and rehearsing in your mind. Ask any athlete, any pro athlete, when they're about to do whatever their their sport is, do you ever rehearse in your mind and be like, oh my gosh, all the time before a big game or a big tournament? Yes, all the time. It is getting the body comfortable with change. It is creating that excitement and the elevation of something that is new and different and exciting. And in order to do that, having that that capacity to visualize things being different, looking just outside of where you are and just playing with it. If I wasn't in this house, what house would I be in? If I wasn't in this job, what job would I be in? And start to explore a little bit and start, this is you trying it on. You want to step out of your career and become an entrepreneur? That shit's scary. Well, you know, try it on. And how do you do that? You try it on inside. You go inward, which is this whole this whole um, acronym. Go inward and try it on. See what it would feel like. Pretend that you don't have to go to work tomorrow and you're going to stay home and you're going to work on some business that you thought. Are you excited? Are you scared? Great. That's okay. Try it on. See how it feels. See what it's like. See, start to get the body used to, used to something different. And then pretty soon when you're ready to step into that role, that new version of you, it won't be so uncomfortable. Your body will go naturally because your body's like, yeah, I've already been here, right? Your subconscious mind is very subjective. You can feed it anything. That's why movies are so great. You watch a horror movie and all of a sudden you can't like, you can't sleep with the, you know, with the lights off because you're scared. Nothing happened. Your house and your neighborhood is still the same. Nothing actually happened. But your subconscious mind is like, dude, freaked out. Like there's giant ants. (laughs) No, there aren't. (laughs) No, there aren't. There's deadly seagulls. No, no, there's not. It was just a movie, right? I don't know if you ever watched any of those old Stephen King movies, but deadly seagulls. Anyway, and the D in going inward stands for do it again. Do it again and again and again and again. Do it every day. Do it more times a day. So do it again or do it daily or daily right? When you start going inward and you start quieting the mind, you start grounding the body in the, in the physical body, in this physical space, on this physical earth, and you start getting centered, then you overcome the body. Nope, body, I'm in charge, right? You're holding the joystick. I'm in charge. We're going to sit here for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever you got. Men or whatever, whatever you want to sit for, add 10 minutes. Really challenge yourself. Then Go inward, bring all your awareness, closing out the outside. This is why we focus on our breathing. This is why we, um, we focus behind our eyes. This is why we close our eyes because we're trying to close off the senses that we're so addicted to. And you go inward, you overcome the body, introspection. You never give up. You're going to do it again. Then you're going to create a want. You're going to wake up to the possibilities, to the newness, to the opportunities of what it is you're about to do. Then you're going to align with that desire. What, what number is that desire? You know, my thinking about my house right now, I might be a three. Thinking about my new house, I'm like a 55 on a scale from one to 10, 
right? I get so excited and I like live there. I've been in this house like for two years and I can't wait to walk Amy through the front door and, and high five Cameron as he's walking through the kitchen with his friends and they're all going to go upstairs in this big like like this extra space or bonus room or whatever above the garage and they're just going to watch TV and, and be boys and, and hang out and it's like I can't wait for that to happen but I have to now align with that in my waking state I can't come out of that and complain about the house I have to align with that right and then I got to be ready to shift I got to be ready to change I'm gonna have to be ready to pack up this house and I've been here for 21 years you know how much stuff I have in this house I have a lot of stuff in this house right I got to be ready for change I got to be ready to shift I got to be ready to grow I got to be ready to elevate because a person that owns that house is not the same person that is sitting here talking to you on this podcast it's a different person. And I got to be able to step into that new version of myself. And I got to do this every day. I got to go through this process every day because I'm putting my order in, but I'm holding myself to this vibration. I'm holding myself to a higher state. So collectively, collectively, my vibration is going up and up and up and up and up because I'm collectively a two, let's say. Well, I'm only going to be in a house that's like a two, right? And I want to now be collectively more like a four, where I'm more of a four than I am a two. Sometimes I dip into a two, but I don't stay as long as I used to. Now I'm a six. Sometimes I dip to a four, but for the most part, I'm a six. And now collectively I'm moving up. What am I doing? I am bringing my dream to me at a faster rate than if I were to go out into the world and physically manipulate things, go out and look for houses, get the paper, go talk to real estate agents, talk, you know, network with people who are in the real estate business and try to find my property. I'm just visualizing it and it's going to show itself and it's going to reveal itself. And then I'm going to have my own little recording studio and I'm going to be doing podcasts in my new recording studio and I'll be talking about it with you when that time happens. And what now what? I have to have faith. I have to trust in my ability. I have to continue to do the work, the inner work, continue to go inward and continue to raise my vibration. And that's what I'm teaching you. So if this is something that landed on you that you feel amazing about and you are ready to like take charge of your life and step into this leadership role and start creating your life from the inside and you want some support doing that, let me know. Send me an email, the meditation room tc at gmail.com. Say, hey, Jen, you know what? I want to know what programs you have. I want to work with you. Let's figure this out. I'm ready to take charge. I'm ready to step into my life and become a lady leader that you're talking about. I would love to support you in any way that I can. Let's chat. Let's just have a conversation and see what we can do. So go inward, begin your practice, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, I would love for you to like, subscribe, and leave a comment as to how this has inspired you. If you're interested in learning about our Lady Leaders Retreat and to join a community of women who connect, heal, and create a life that is full of joy, inspiration, and empowerment, then send me an email at themeditationroomtc at gmail.com. Subject line, let's talk. And I will set up a time for us to have a conversation. And in the meantime, keep going growing and transforming and keep looking for those nuggets of inspiration. Mm-hmm.